Hey, hey, thanks everyone for jumping in today. Happy Saturday and let's kick it off. As usual, we have plenty of stuff to talk through. Um, busy weekend is, is coming along. Uh, but as the first thing, I would like to find a volunteer for note taking for the call and primarily for our identifying actionable tasks. Who's responsible for those, interrupting us and making sure that's an actionable task and then summarizing uh, the list of actionable tasks at the end of the call. Is there a volunteer? All right, Daniel, you wanna help with this one today? Uh, sh sure, I can grab that. All right, sounds good. So uh, the first thing is just sharing some quick wins and updates, uh, song PR, um, offered us pro bono help and um, in in PR and public relations and streamlining our um, communication with the external world, which is super helpful. They created the email alias uh, for us and going to take care of all the incoming inquiries and making sure we we're not doing any um, you know irrelevant press or press that won't benefit us as a group. Um, so that's great. They also gave us the idea of hosting a webinar to explain our first Kaggle submission. So kind of inviting a bunch of different uh, people from different industries, including journalists that are curious about what's going on. So that, that should be interesting. Um, we're also figuring out fiscal partnerships with uh, nonprofits to cover the, the current costs of operation. We're slowly, slowly ramping up on various tools and infrastructure like, for example, Zapier, we almost hit our first tier of paid uh, plan. So we're going to reach out to them for that. But there, there are still going to be tools that we need um, some financials to, to cover, cover with. So um, the next steps are also figuring out our mission and values. We're kind of starting the discussion and um, I've shared that uh, video that I had with um, David Hansel on our initial draft of mission and values. Obviously just a starting point, but at least um, that, that creates a discussion. And also another interesting thing that is happening is us enabling, slowly enabling other projects like that data ownership sharing initiative while focusing on uh, obviously the main uh, Kaggle tasks. So lots of good stuff. Again, we're still focused on Kaggle submissions and that's our uh, primary goal in the short term, but there's so many amazing things that are happening um, you know, around us. So the first point in, on the agenda is uh, coordinators progress and um, onboarding coordinators versus team coordinators. Um, the quick thing that I want to mention here before I pass it to Tyler or, or Daniel is the fact that we are actually in a crucial need for uh, coordinators for medical community and primarily those that uh, you know live outside of Slack that we need to integrate into um, our progress and first Kaggle submission somehow. So yeah. Tyler, Daniel, do you want to jump in here? Uh, yeah, I'll say one thing I'll say is that um, there's a lot of uh, kind of exciting progress happening. You know, uh, Ogali, Alicia, uh, Yada, we have a few people who are really working on trying to come up with a streamlined way for us to, to make sure that each of the different teams uh, needs are met. Um, and just to say that, you know, we're, we're, we're an iterative organization. We're going to keep on iterating and experimenting with different things to, to see which things work. Uh, so just we appreciate everyone's patience as we're, as we're trying out different things to see what, what works for everyone. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's the, the key piece that I would say on that. Communications wise, um, we would love if we're able to get um, some help putting together some promo materials for the event on the 15th that we're doing with Professor Stive. So if somebody wants to jump in and help, we just need to make like a simple little flyer. Um, so, so ping me and I can give you details on that. But uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, of, of great outreach and connection stuff that's being on. Yeah, I was gonna look. Um, I was gonna look at a flyer this morning, but I got sidetracked by annotation questions and needs needs questions, and I actually had a couple of hours off for the first time in a week. Yeah. <laughs> I actually left and the house. That's so. Huge. I was, yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm actually gonna make a point of giving myself a little bit of time away from from screen and spend. I some watched time the movie right. first time in, in the past <laughs> two weeks. That's. 
that's, that's the, what you're talking about there, Tyler, is also a key thing, is both to make sure that everybody is taking care of themselves, but also to remember that every person who you're asking to take on a task or who you're wondering where that thing is that they're working on, just remember that each one of those people is, is doing all of this in their volunteer time out of the goodness of their heart. So we have to be very patient and gracious with each, with each other because the amount of output everyone is making is just phenomenal. Um, on, on that note, slightly, um, I've got yesterday, later on, I got a confirmation through the employment agency I work with that I'm going to be getting my furlough money. So I'm going to be paid from the government from, for the time being. So it means I can not have to worry about my bills as much for the next at least month, which is a nice thing. And it means I can, because I can only do voluntary work if that's the case. And I've got voluntary stuff on the side, but I'm kind of considering this as a shitload of voluntary work as well. So... Um, yeah, and it's actually a good point that we're kind of discussing, uh, you know, internally because, like, obviously we want to sustain the momentum and keep as many people engaged as possible, but there are basic needs that each of us has that we need to somehow figure out. And obviously there, there are potential ways to, you know, secure some funding to, you know, support this until we're sustainable in some ways. And we're, we're actively discussing ways to, to manage that. And, and to help with that also, if anybody um, thinks that it's worthwhile to check with their bosses, well, I know we've had a couple of people who've checked to see if their, their employers can donate some of their hours here. We're happy to, to if, you're, if you're working on one of our tasks, uh, of, of, on any team, we can help put together a little letter that says like, yes, this person is, is actually volunteering with Corona Y, they're doing important work here. So anything we can do to support you being able to do your work, let us know. Yeah, and if it case comes down to being able to communicate that better, so you can use that as leverage in your work situations as too, obviously. And I'm, I'm starting to pick up people on my LinkedIn and I think I'm um, trying to support each other in uh, networking in that sort of way and making it uh, validating every, everybody else is making it seem more real and organization helps as well. I'm going to try and catch my LinkedIn there and make it look relevant right now. It's very plain. Yeah, a lot of people are adding uh, the uh, Corona Y as an organization to their LinkedIn. So yeah, we highly encourage that. And again, it, it's real and it, it, it demands to, to be, uh, you know, a showcase. All right, so I think uh, we, we need to find a person to help us with this uh, need for medical community coordination. Um, is there someone on this call that could help us streamline the processes? The side effects right now when it comes to medical things is a lot of medical people are probably really busy. And that's Give true, the except, you know, we've discovered that there are, there are a lot of medical people that are um, you know, they don't have environment to, to work in because most of the labs are closed or, you know, most of the organizations are not working efficiently. So, you know, some people are extremely busy and some may be super free. So we just need to figure out how to approach those that are not super busy. Uh, we have some... an am amazing kind of uh, case where like uh, an experienced MD person took his time and manually went and read all the articles we suggested him to read and graded them. So I think it's possible. Well, I'm not. I'm not saying we're not going to get. Med we already are getting medical people on board. It's just a case of it's finding about. someone who's medically knowledgeable enough to be able to coordinate medical people while also fitting that in, because that's going to be a much more time-intensive task than read these ten articles, give us a point of view, give us an hour. Somebody who's going to be coordinating potentially twenty, thirty, forty medical professionals is going to need more time and that's the balance that we're going to have to try and find but yeah. i'm not saying we can't do it i'm just saying it's the first thing that i came out of my head is like yeah. finding someone who's very medically aware and medically trained enough to be able to talk to other medical professionals while also understanding how we work and how to involve the whole thing it's uh, it's asking a big a big crossover for sure. One, one other just, just quick piece that I think is helpful there is we can look at doing, we're starting to get results that are like Maya was talking about that are sufficiently interesting in terms of the right sets of articles that, uh, that we could think about doing a call out to a few of the right, the right researchers to simply say, um, you know, we're building this thing. Here's the tests that we're, we're coming out with. Can you let us know if these are the right kind of results in terms of the articles that you'd be looking for? And, and that way they're getting benefit out of it while we're also refining the process. So just a thought. 
Yep. All right. So the next point is, uh, is discussing human resources challenges and team needs progress. Um, there is an update with uh, Yada joining um, uh, the team and basically streamlining the needs and the process around that. I think that's that's great. Hopefully, you know that uh, that helps us today uh, with the increase for different kinds of needs as we're preparing for the Kaggle submission. Uh, the next piece is communications quick update. Um, we are working on the new version of the website. Hopefully we'll review it uh, together today and uh, publish it sometime soon. Uh, we are also working on the podcast, getting some movement there with Evgeny, uh, helping us organize all the resources that we need. And um, Daniel, anything else on communications? No, I think those are the, the, the main things to kind of cover here. Sounds good. All right. Then uh, I've go got ahead. one, but someone else can go first. Go ahead. Let's see you go. Let's see you go. Lesson? Or? Yep, yep. Uh, I just want to add one point regarding uh, onboarding process. If you don't mind, um, my point is that uh, we suddenly have pretty big amount of people who is working on it. And what I noticed that uh, e almost each of them came up with the new idea of the process. And I feel that we are not aligned about it. Uh, so maybe we need to do something with that. Maybe like, I don't know. Yeah, any let's, let's converge into the, the one that is most efficient. I'll let you guys, um, you know, jump into Slack and, and start the discussion on that. I've, I've seen that. I think it's, again, very organic uh, kind of creative redundancy that we're observing even with the four uh, main tasks. And we, we obviously encourage everyone to do that. So let's see what are the common patterns that are working and converge to something that will uh, basically grab the best things out of them all. Sounds good. Yeah, we're kind of basically A-B testing, but we're doing A-B-C-D testing maybe right now, I don't know. Um, we're doing a number of different ways and I don't know which one's necessarily the best one, but um, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate most of the communications in Trello and most of the, like, most of the discussion stuff and that way, that way and in Slack and then Trello can be left for tracking tasks and what I consider like mid mid term memory thinking rather than like discussions right now that can be forgotten and washed away is things that are going to be need to be thought about for the next two days or the next three days or the next five days or however long a project or task is, is living for um, and when it comes to communication I find it easier to uh, communicate but, you know, with, with, with Slack because it's a more instant communication and not everyone keeps as close an eye on Trello's comment threads and they're all kind of a bit everywhere and you have to be in a card to be able to get a notification whereas if you can notify someone in the channels and a card is almost like a channel in that sense and then there's hundreds more channels yeah. than there are channels in the already very large amount of channels we've got in Slack. It's, yeah. it, it just makes the problem and we also I, I also don't want another system so we are trying to pull away from maybe using a spreadsheet or maybe using another version of things so yeah the I, I, i'm leaning towards having this slack, the slack channel with needs with just the team the team leaders and the support team leaders and the coordinator the onboarding coordinators and everyone else doesn't need to be there because that is literally yeah. the only purpose of that there's no conversation happens in there it's just i need this or I found this person. That's literally, the, it's not an interesting thread. It's just. Yeah. And I actually, and that was the best thing that came out of yesterday or uh, I don't know when, uh, basically the, the conversational quick request, I need this and the coordinators fulfilling that and using spreadsheets or whatever forms they need to organize themselves. So that's great. All right. So, and again, I, I agree that there might be many different methods and ABCDEs that we're gonna be using. And they may be actually relevant to different personas and different profiles. So yeah, let's let's figure out some structure around that. Yeah, All right. uh, uh, could I jump in just a little bit? Um, so if we're mentioning like, um, uh, for example, team needs, then I don't have to put them as action items in the general, and I don't have to add them to the main trail board. That'll probably help um, with 
not having collisions between uh, Trello and the Slack needs channel. Yeah, that's, exa that's exactly it. It's just trying to make it all in one place. And it's, yes, if someone needs to, if it, like an internal team needs to make a marker on their own thing, but <coughs> the, the, the way I look at that is they should be communicating with the team leader because then communicate to onboarding and then it's no longer their task. It's, they've handed the task off to the people who need to go find it and we'll go find it. And that's like, you've done your part of it. We will do ours and that's kind of, and then you don't have to have a board full of, well, we need more of these and we need more of them. And, and the main board don't need to know, go like, I oh, need immunology, we need immunologists here and we need that. We'll just have one place where onboarding people will find the list of what we need right now. And we can be able to go, this is what I think is good for it. And then we'll, whoever's on the, on the team can see it when they come on because there's no other conversation. You don't get, again, washed away with conversations and they can go, right, okay, I'm, you know, you could tag, oh. tag people in it. And it's just, it's quicker notifications. It's, you don't get washed away. You don't get lost. That's part of the problem is there's so many things moving and so many. I, I did a bit of Trello tidying up uh, yesterday and clearing up and did some organizing and tagging and adding myself to cards that I didn't add because of, again, it's just like an extra layer of like, if I'm not in a card, I don't get notifications when somebody makes a post on it. And it's just, it's just an extra layer of thinking and I've already got it. I've already started. Well, I've, I've pretty much got Slack tidied and working now. So I need to work out how to get Trello tidied and working. And if I find out a way and help anyone else, I'll do that. And we can, yeah, we can streamline. We've, we've done the, uh, the burst grow and now we need to work out what works and cut it back to just them. Yep. Sounds great. All right. We're, we have to jump into team reporting. I'll quickly remind you the structure, high level progress, quick summary on tasks that you're working on time to results, what are the results and how soon you'll showcase them, and the blockers, what do you need help with? And we're gonna start with Maya, uh, Team Risk Factors. Uh, hello everybody. Uh, we have seven super relevant papers on pollution, bingo. <laughs> now we know that the approach works and it's doable which is one of the most important things on here is like kind of knowing that what you've been doing so far for a couple of weeks, uh, it, it is actually working. So now the idea is to scale what we have and we really need to push for the next few days. And the expectation is to have uh, pollution, population density and um, uh, t air temperature as an environmental factors and uh, we plan to have heart risk and uh, some of other chronic diseases if we will be capable of scaling that yeah that's boring and, <laughs> and <laughs> we, uh, want, we want to have a risk factor like age elderies um, we need we, we, uh, today we already have uh, um, a background and methodology section written for the final Kaggle submission. So we need to really push the next few days, then we need uh, visualization and we are good. All right, sounds amazing. So the next team, <clears throat> Task uh, Geo, Daniel. Yes, hi everyone. So we're progressing steadily. We should have uh, um, meteorological data from NASA ready very soon, hopefully tomorrow. Um, same for Italian demographic data. We are also developing uh, the, the pipeline to automate the upload to Cargo. Um, still, I mean, I know it takes time. Um, <laughs> And uh, we have decided to include in our scope also Swedish data, since they are following an approach that's a bit different from other countries, just not doing um, social distancing measures and so on. Um, so we thought it could be very interesting to have data from there as well. So we have one person who started working on that now. Um, for that, we already have a granular um, contagion data uh, that was already sourced a while ago. We have a global coverage and by region in many places. And yes, so we onboarded also a couple of people to help us out a little bit with GitHub. So situation on that side should get better um, in the next few days. 
And that's the main points I would say. Sounds great. Next task, transmission, Christine. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, so we had pretty good discussions um, on the you know, topic modeling approaches. Uh, we discussed the pros and cons of different approaches and finally, uh, hopefully we'll be able to settle down on one and then we're aiming to um, migrate our current notebooks to Kago, hopefully by tomorrow. Um, and also uh, the other thing is, so we have data extraction in progress, uh, aside from the study design that uh, we're waiting on the notation data, uh, we, are, we have people working on location um, and demographics, including age, sex, hopefully. And we're also looking to get some um, specific outcomes information, such as for our tax incubation periods or the prevalence of asymptomatic shedding. Um, and <clears throat> we're focusing on more structured data, kind of like in the reporting is structured that's able to, we can uh, extract this kind of information in an automatic way. And hopefully that would be some sort of like proof of concept uh, on how we tackle this, uh, this type, kind of problem, essentially. And yeah, that's uh, our progress so far. I think we're moving and uh, making progress and hope to continue. Sounds great. All right, next team, vaccines, Dan Salsa. Hey everybody, uh, not a ton to report on today. We're basically just continuing to make uh, our pipeline more accurate and just improve it. So one thing that we're doing is just incorporating a, a better, more comprehensive list of drugs now and we're ensuring that we're, we're checking for a lot of relevant drugs out there. Um, we might make a couple big decisions about the pipeline, so we might decide that like we need to think more about negation detection or we need to think about uh, making calls about efficacy of drugs, and so we're going to discuss that stuff today. But just continuing to refine our first deliverable, no blockers right now. All right, sounds great. Um, anything else uh, admin team has? Um... To, to talk through before we jump into Q&A with uh, anyone do, that has questions. All right, uh, then anyone who has questions, this is your time to speak up. Whether you're new or confused or you need help with uh, something, um, just let us know. This is your couple of minutes to, to speak up. All right, we're good then. I have oh. only one question, one Go quick ahead. question. Uh, I would like to know, maybe I missed it, then sorry, when we will be able to see like first results uh, that we can, I don't know, try show with, uh, everyone who is interested, I don't know, share on, share everywhere, something like that. So hopefully um, the, the deadline submission is April 16th. Uh, I'm not sure if we can submit on April 16th or we should submit before. Need to double check on that. But hopefully before April 16th, we will be working on streamlining everything and packaging it. And on April 16th, we will have something to showcase. I think the best way would be to give it a couple more days and actually you know, fine tune and tweak whatever we present to general public as part of the submission. And that webinar that um, PR uh, firm suggested would be a great way to kind of, uh, first of all, communicate it to non-technical people and also showcase that, hey, we're not just a random group of people, we're, we are organized, uh, self-organized collaboration. And here are the results that we've uh, produced so far and how we came to the, the conclusion that, that these results make sense. Does that answer your question? Yep. I will stick to April 18th. <laughs> and 16th. Wait. Yeah. 16th, sorry. Yeah. One, one thing that also might be helpful, I've been thinking about, about how do we make sure we have all of our eyes on the different pieces. Under the team boards, uh, I may on the main board simply put a place for, for submissions. And that'll be a separate Trello board that will just have a very few things. It'll have the links to the actual notebooks, that, that are the ones that we're shaping up. 
to be the final notebook. And then if people have any, any suggestions or ideas for how we can be dealing with that, it'll, it'll include the, the scoring metrics that we're using, um, and it'll include um, a, a place where people can kind of give any, any suggestions or offers of help, just so that we can all be working together to get those. What you're suggesting is the card on resources of each uh, team that has a link to the final notebook, right? Um, uh, yeah, I was, I was also thinking just under team boards, we may have something, because we're coming closing in on the thing, just having a, a specific one that's going to submissions, where we can have a place that is just, oh, here's the first list submission. of all boards, uh, yeah. all, list so of all it, notebooks. It, it, give, it gives one space for a discussion for people to pull it all into one place, rather than it being on four different yeah. boards, yeah. And yeah. if they go find sense. them all. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Sounds good, guys. I'll wrap it up. Uh, thank you. Um, quick, quick Go question, ahead. Dan. What's uh, Dan? What time, Dan Sosa? What time is your team call? Because I won't mind listening in or if it's possible. Because I've been doing some annotation for you. I'm like, I won't mind trying to get a better idea of what you're doing. It'll be in five minutes. Absolutely great. Five <laughs> minutes it is. Cool. And now, and Daniel Lindenberger, I need to talk to you as well about the several documents I've got open to talk about <laughs> communication stuff, just to do it well on here. All right, plenty of stuff. Busy, yeah, busy stuff. weekend. So, busy, busy. all right. Thanks again, everyone, for jumping in. And please stay healthy. Don't burn out. Again, this is super important. Take care of your health. And yeah, thank you so much. You um, too. Take care of yourself. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.